Okay, I should. I call you Queen Gitana. No, I'm Gitana. I kind of um leaving the queen behind. Why? Because I'm a goddess. Um, I'm so grateful today because we are in the presence of goddess Zaya. Oh my god, hey! So happy. <laughs> she is a womb priestess and she's about to um, guide us through a lot of womb wisdom, wisdom. <laughs> so uh, check it out. Um, I know a lot of people know about womb priestess like mm -hmm. wh what it is what what is your work what are you doing so first and foremost peace and blessing everybody honored that you reach out thank you so much to have a more black women in montreal yeah awakening to this knowledge is definitely a blessing my name is gitana um aka queen zaya or they call me the nunu specialist um Wow, what is a womb priestess? I encountered this, I would say, wow, years ago, seriously. Um, it all started with um, my own pain, my own journey into my womb. I was fortunate to never had like heavy or black clacks or bad menstruation, but I was always aware that there was something divine and sacred about it. One day I fell into Queen of Fua book. The sacred, <laughs> sacred woman yeah. book, mm -hmm. and that's what really opened my journey. Um, if you look at my book, I will show you guys. It's like almost falling apart. I want to change it. I can't. It's just my Bible is over ten years that I've been working with it. And working with the Queen of Fuwa book, um, you go to the different gateways, and and my knowledge and understanding started to open. Um, I would do natural stuff naturally. I've been gifted ever since I'm a child, but um, I was brought up in a Christian family, so it was wrong. And the more I understand my lineage and my pattern and the person that I am, I understood that it was actually a gift. But since we're black and we're Christian, all of those stuff are taboo, it's called voodoo and stuff like that. But it has nothing to do with that. It's you being in tune with who you are. It's being in tune with the nature in itself. And that's when I discovered my relationship with God was so different. So being a womb priestess is not just focusing on the womb, it's focusing on the mind, body, and soul. It's really understanding that the womb is a brain in itself. And that's where we store in all of your emotion, all of our trauma, all of our joy. And by understanding that, then you can reflect on the mind. Because the mind is here to protect us. The mind is masculine. The womb is feminine. So we have all of this energy shifting into us and if you're not aware of it then that's when you will develop cysts and diseases and problems and, and not understanding why your moon is more heavy this month or the previous month and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So understanding the cycle yes. is really important. Of so course. how the womb, because this is not something which has been told in school or no. nowhere. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how the womb is such a... Uh, um, it's so important to our life. How do we reflect our life so much? Wow. Um, my first acknowledgement of my womb stop started when I stopped eating meat. I was 15 year old. Why oh, you stuck young? Yes. In a Christian family. In a Christian family, I was the weirdest one. Yeah. Always. Hi. I love <laughs> you for that. <laughs> but um, when I start stopped eating meat. Of course it was hard because you go back to on Sunday, my mom's cooking the chicken, the smell is something amazing, <laughs> you know. And every time I would eat it, my stomach would hurt so bad. And I would notice how when I have my period, I had heavy blood clots. Okay. And I had, it was, it was just so painful. And then if I would stop eating meat for that whole month, mm -hmm. it was fluent. It was just liquid. It was mm -hmm. just so much easier. When I stopped eating the meat, my dream got so much more clearer. Because I was somebody that was dreaming a lot when I was younger, before, pre-post pre, pre when I had my period. Mm -hmm. I was very awake and in my dreams, the spirit was, e the spirit was easier for me to understand. Mm -hmm. when I, once I had my period, it started to be much more hard to have the same connection with the universe. And then the comedic always was following me, the comedic life. And once you start looking into the comedic life, you start understanding the key of life. You start understanding that... The, the knowledge and the science of how they created religion and where did it come from and all of this is part of the womb because you go back to understand the importance of what is it is to be a woman 
you know, we were talking about um, queen and why I say I'm, I no longer associate myself with that. I am a queen. Don't get me wrong. I'm a black queen for sure. But I stopped associating myself with it because of how we devalue the, the, the name. It started to be a brand. When it starts to be a brand, I don't want to be part of it. Yeah. I actually call myself a goddess because I'm like, I'm a child of God himself. I'm here to do this mission. I'm holding this crown knowing that now how I act, how I speak, and how I talk, how I behave has to come from a godly manner. And it has to come from a, a pure heart. So I'm more aware than just because I'm a black woman, I'm a queen. It's my title. It comes with me. It's my birthright. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm come, I come from a lineage of kings and queens yeah. before slavery. So it's, it's me, you know. But being a goddess is more, okay, I really have to be careful with my action right now. Because if I'm calling myself a goddess, because I acknowledge that I am a child of God. Mm -hmm. And that is what is part of all the womb and the essence. Now I want to talk about healing. Yes. Um... Do black women, just by being bl a black woman, mm -hmm. with our, our baggage of, our ancestral baggage, mm -hmm. do we not, do we born with need of healing? Yes, totally, yeah. totally. You know, there's one thing um, the system or the doctors would always say, and it's like, black women are more prone than a white woman to have cysts and fibroids. Yeah. And it's true, why? Because of where we come from. When you know about cysts and fibroids, especially fibroids, you understand fibroids is anger. Fibroids is pain that was not spoken about. So if you come from the womb of your mother that went through a certain trauma and she wasn't ready to have you or certain things happened with the father, this pain that you are bringing and you are, are grooming into, women, we take that. So now you come with this pain. But you have to understand that your mother went through something that her mother went through. And it goes all the way back to slavery when you was raped, molested, abused, where they spit on you. And all this generation of, of pain and trauma. So depending on the woman and the traumas and the family, automatically, yes, women will come with that vein. Mm -hmm. When you have the real broken heart, that's when you start scarring yourself. That's when you say, I will never get back to this. I will never do this for a man. I will never feel such way. So now you're starting to put curses on yourself. Where you promise yourself that you won't do this. And then the universe will keep on rotating relationship towards you. Where you keep on going back to it. Because God wants to see how serious you want. But you won't notice that yet. Mm -hmm. And every time and you get really harder. You want. It's, it's not, not really what, what you, you want. want. No. You just have but you have to move on from the lesson. But is it really the lesson? It's a life? lesson. I could sit down here and tell you I remember every single man I had never had money. Yeah. I could sit down here and tell you that every man I had had a low self-esteem. They were hot, fine, handsome. But they were all broken men. Mm -hmm. That was my reflection. But I kept on telling the universe that I will never do this. I will never do that. So I kept on having the same relationship and same relationship until I understood that, hey, I have to heal myself. Yeah. I promised myself that I was never going to get to it, but I keep attracting it. Why? Because I never faced the problem. Mm -hmm. It was you. It was always me. The first thing my man told me when he met me was, I will never love you the same way every day. And I didn't understand. that. how oh, you can love me. And I'm like already jumping on my... And he said, do you understand what I'm saying? It took me two years to understand. It's true. Some mm -hmm. days I don't love you. And it's okay. Some day I can't leave without you. And it's okay. Some day I just want us to be friends. It's okay. <laughs> I don't it's have true. to always be because, in love. Yeah. We can't always be in love. If I don't love myself, I can't love you. Yeah, we all go through this. And cycle. it's okay. It's but in a relationship today, as long as you lose that spark, relationship are broken we don't have the power to invest in our relationship because the spark is gone mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be about the spark you're ready to be in a relationship when you're ready to love you're ready to be in a relationship when you're ready to be like okay right now i love me so much that i can work to myself and then you can be in a relationship when you're ready to sacrifice you cannot be in a relationship when you're ready to sacrifice. You have. When you want to be in a relationship, you have to be ready to sacrifice. I have to be ready to, I have to be willing to say, okay, right now I know that my insecurity 
is let's say that I need you to tell me I'm beautiful but if the person is not a person that has to express, I have to be okay with the fact that you won't be telling me that I'm beautiful all the time. But I have to understand that through your language of love, you bringing me breakfast is telling me that I'm beautiful. So I'm ready to sacrifice my needs to understand how you behave so we can find a basic communication. Yes. That's when you're ready. When you're ready to let go of all your baggages, you show them this is my job. This is my baggage. Exactly. But also know your baggage. And I know my baggage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And know the other person. And, that, and together we like unfolding these baggages. We're looking at how ugly it is. Okay, right now you're going through your shit. Go ahead here. And understanding that right now you need your own space and respect. I don't have to be involved in your shit. Let me go fix mine at the same time. That's what a relationship is for me. That's mm -hmm. what I understood. We come back to the same Thing over and over again until you learn from it. That's how you grow. <laughs> no, because you know you say about the um, mm. um, the womb. Okay? Yes, yes. It's like uh, the feminine brain. Yes. So men only bless with one brain, but we bless with two. Men are they have two brain too. But there is it it's not a womb what it is. They have a womb too. Oh yeah? Yeah. Well how explain that. I don't know. When I have my period, you know I'm gonna have my period? My husband will act a certain way when we cry to me. <laughs> oh yeah. He sings with my energy. <laughs> really? Yeah. I have to pay attention to my yeah. I don't know. Yeah. He will act a certain way and I'll be like, okay, I'm about to have my period. <laughs> I know for one week for a fact for sure. 